Welcome back to Financial Health, everyone. Joining us again this week is Jason Nickerson, the president and COO of John G. Allman and Associates. And Jason, this uh, week, we are talking about a question that so many people wish they had the crystal ball to know the answer to, and it's regarding interest rates. Are interest rates really going to come down this year? We've been dealing with uh, very high and in some cases historically high interest rates when it comes to uh, mortgages and, and loans and other types of things. And it's really having an impact on uh, so many people in so many different ways. So, you know, let's talk about it. Yeah, that's it's a great question. Um, and I would say it's anyone's best guess as to what's going to happen at this point. Every expert, almost every expert you hear uh, speaking about this has probably been wrong or you know, not, not exactly correct on their guess of how many interest rate decreases we're actually going to get this year. So first, though, because this is about personal finances, let's talk about how the relevancy of this question affects us as individuals, right? Interest rates are important for a couple of reasons. One, the, it is the main tool of the Federal Reserve to either speed up or slow down the economy. Many of us know that by now, right? <clears throat> we're, a, we're a country that is based on consumption and the use of debt for that consumption. And so higher interest rates on that debt, on borrowing and consuming will cost us more. Therefore, our that, that economic activity will slow down, right? We, we're not as encouraged to go out and borrow, to borrow and buy, right? If interest rates are lower, we're more encouraged to borrow and go buy, right? And hopefully everyone is borrowing and buying in the right way as we've covered in past episodes. Right? But the Federal Reserve is actually watching a couple of key economic indicators to determine if they should be lowering rates or not. It's really about inflation for them. And they've been very consistent in their communication around that. It's the overall inflation on goods, services, and housing, and they're also watching unemployment. Now, inflation, we're going to talk, you know, we'll talk, we've talked earlier this year, we're going to talk more about this later in the year, but it's been their number one indicator as to if they should lower rates. And as you had uh, referred to, back in 2022, we hit sort of like this recent high of 8% annualized inflation. We've now come down to 3%. So the Federal Reserve is encouraged that their actions have, have taken effect, but they've also been consistent in their communication that they're really targeting to get it down to 2%. Unemployment, as I mentioned, is another indicator they're watching that's starting to tick up slowly, but not to a level that's detrimental necessarily. So these are good signs that their policy of keeping rates higher than where they had been is working. And it appears that they are done raising rates for now. It appears so. It, it now the question becomes, when will they start to come down? Well, again, they're going to keep watching some of these key indicators. And so let's review what that is again so people are paying attention to the right ones. And then I've got an opinion, actually, on a couple of others that I think could impact their decision. Inflation is the number one. And until it comes down to their target, they've been very consistent. It's currently sitting at about three. They want it to be down to about two. If it does come down, then I th think we start to see some interest rate decreases. Another one is unemployment. If unemployment right increases significantly, I think they'll take an action there, even if inflation has not come all the way down to their 2% target. And then a couple that I just, in, in sort of my opinion, that are being watched but don't get talked about enough is stock market performance and politics. I do think they play a role in the Fed's decision of whether to lower rates or not. That can have an impact on presidential elections and things like that, right, is if we have good stock market versus a poor stock market and who is in office versus who might might take over office. So there there are some other things that are unspoken that that can have an impact. Now, one other thing to pay attention for us as consumers and investors is that the first couple of interest rate decreases, when they happen, they're going to be cheered. Those are going to be viewed as positives, right? So we may see uh, some good stock market performance out of it. So let's say we may not, but they're usually cheered as, as good moves. If they continue to decrease rates, we all need to be very mindful and watchful of that because that can mean an economy is slowing down much faster than they really want it to, right? So Renata, back to your original question. No one really knows. The expectation is that, and the probabilities are, we, we are going to get one this year and maybe two, mm -hmm. uh, but I wouldn't expect much more than that. 
Yeah. And like you mentioned is there's so many factors either directly impacting or indirectly or influencing societally. Um, and, you know, like I said at the, at the beginning, I wish we had that crystal ball to, to be able to figure it out, but as a society, I guess we'll continue to, to ride the wave and, and manage as we have been. Absolutely. So Jason, we'll see you back here for that next week. See you next week.